Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, I, I, good morning, everybody. I, I would like to discuss with you um, some data on uh, spontaneous breathing ventilation at the early phase of IRDS. I will not discuss uh, uh, NAVA during my talk, but I think that the data we have gathered with a group of Laurent Brochard on IRDS and spontaneous breathing ventilation may be interesting in order to, to discuss the place of uh, NAVA in this setting. So uh, this is my conflict of interest. Um, the, 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 this slide, these points have been uh, uh, discussed in detail this morning by our colleague uh, regarding the advantage and drawback of uh, controlled mechanical ventilation uh, at the early phase of IRDS. But rapidly, as you, as you know, uh, controlled mechanical ventilation in IRDS is today not recommended, but uh, um, suggested uh, because of the recent data of the French group of Laurent Papazian suggesting that a short time under paralysis at the early phase may improve the prognosis uh, of ARDS patient compared to uh, mechanical ventilation without uh, systematic uh, uh, paralysis. Uh, however, there is some advantages and some drawback associated with paralysis. As you know, uh, this, this advantage uh, should be um, uh, taken into account, but also uh, these drawbacks. The monotony of the tidal volume when the patient is paralyzed, the, and, and, more, uh, and mostly important, the respiratory muscle atrophy uh, that may result uh, rapidly after mechanical ventilation if uh, the spontaneous uh, diaphragmatic activity is uh, fully uh, um, uh, delayed, uh, stopped by a paralysis. So uh, we have to keep in mind this uh, potential, uh, these points, uh, and also to discuss the advantage and drawback of spontaneous ventilation at the early phase. Uh, and again, advantage to prevent ventilatory induced diaphragmatic dysfunction, but uh, to better recruit the lung um, in the dorsal and diaphragmatic region of the lung, to allow spontaneous breathing uh, at different time of mechanical ventilation, but also some uh, expected uh, shortcoming with spontaneous ventilation, the increase in work, on work of breathing that may result for too much spontaneous ventilation, the control of tidal volume, we can lose some control of tidal volume in case of high respiratory drive uh, in, in, in some uh, sitting. And uh, the issue related to high transpulmonary pressure that again may occur in case of high respiratory drive. So uh, we have to balance between disadvantage and drawback. But everybody here is okay to say that it's very important to move rapidly from control ventilation to spontaneous ventilation. So the idea we, have, uh, we had with uh, Laurent Brochard uh, several years ago is uh, to discuss a mode of ventilation in which we can uh, superpose uh, the spontaneous ventilation that you can observe for, uh, during CPAP, for instance, uh, with some uh, mandatory breaths um, uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, allow a given level of uh, minute ventilation to, uh, for CO2 uh, exhalation and oxygenation. And if you combine these two types of uh, ventilator modality, uh, you can uh, obtain something like that, uh, a spontaneous breathing activity from the patient, either during the high pressure uh, or during the low pressure, that is to say the peak level. So the, the, the idea that I, I recognize is a little bit provocative is to allow a complete asynchrony between the spontaneous breathing activity of the patient and the mandatory breath that you set on the ventilator in order to impose a given level of uh, mechanical ventilation. Uh, this type of ventilation is uh, available uh, with the mode of ventilation called APRV, and this is the choice we, 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 we did. Um, Why we did this choice? Uh, just because if you consider the similar pattern of uh, respiratory uh, of uh, pressure, inspiratory pressure, and PEEP level. But if you consider a mode of ventilation like BPAP or pressure assist control ventilation, in which you add some trigger windows, 
uh, either at uh, the inspiration or uh, at uh, the uh, to, to switch from inspiration to expiration. If you add some synchronization uh, by means of this trigger, you probably promote some um, um, uh, uh, synchronization between spontaneous diaphragmatic activity and change in pressure from the ventilator. And then you may promote large tidal volume just by uh, amplifying uh, what is done by the, uh, what is due by the diaphragm. So uh, the idea we had is to uh, combine spontaneous ventilation with control ventilation without any possibility of trigger windows. So let's uh, look at uh, our concept uh, with uh, some curve obtained in, on a bench test. So it's not a physiology, it's a ex vivo. There is no uh, feedback on, uh, on control of breathing, of course. This is SIMV. Uh, BPAP SIMV, uh, that is to say some mandatory breath and some spontaneous breath uh, during which the, the experiment, the pressure was set at zero. And uh, in this uh, bench model, we have a spontaneous, we have a, 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 a lung, um, lung model that allows spontaneous breathing activity and we set some uh, oesophageal swing that occur uh, randomly. Uh, this is what happened in terms of uh, tidal volume, six meter per kilogram, 10 milliliter per kilogram. As you can see, there is a variation and there is a tendency to have a tidal volume uh, close from 10 milliliter uh, kilogram, even if there is some uh, low tidal volume, probably related to uh, what happened at uh, PIP level uh, during SIMV. What happened with exactly the same pattern on the bench model, but with APRV, is uh, uh, represented here. Uh, and as you, as you can see, the tidal volume, uh, in contrast of the, the first recording, is, uh, is uh, kept uh, around uh, 6 milliliters per kilogram. And uh, how to explain this difference? This difference is only due to the fact that with BPAP uh, SIMV, there is some trigger that you can see here, and there is a, a good synchronization between uh, oesophageal breath, neural breath, and change of pressure from the ventilator, enhancing, uh, uh, amplifying high tidal volume. Uh, with RPRV, uh, because of the lack of any possibility of synchronization, uh, the, the, the breaths uh, occur randomly and there is no trigger, uh, so smallest tidal volume, and sometimes there is high tidal volume because in this example, just by chance, uh, there is a coincidence between uh, the occurrence of the neural breath and the change in pressure from the ventilator. So, uh, the, the message is that uh, if you add some synchronization in the mode of ventilation, you will amplify the tidal volume, at least with conventional mode of ventilation for which there is no down regulation of uh, the tidal volume, like we can, uh, uh, in contrast, that we can uh, expect with NAVA. So this is the result of our study on the bench. Uh, this is RPRV, and maybe look at RPRV on the uh, uh, SIMV with pressure support. This is small tidal volume, intermediate on high tidal volume. As you can see with RPRV, there is a distribution favoring low tidal volume in contrast with BPAP and um, BPAP uh, pressure support. You have a tendency to have higher tidal volume due to the synchronization. We have performed the same similar study uh, in a group of 10 patients with IRDS, uh, looking uh, at uh, the control of tidal volume with uh, the setting we propose in APRV. And uh, what is op we observe is uh, representing here. This is for each patient, the distribution for the five first day of mechanical ventilation of the tidal volume around six meters per kilogram, suggesting 
that the control of the tidal volume with this mode of ventilation is relatively efficient. So we are currently starting a large multicenter randomized study comparing assist control ventilation with APRV with exactly the same uh, uh, settings regarding PEEP, tidal volume, and plateau pressure, and a similar uh, strategy to stop uh, paralysis after 24 hours to, to, to start with the winning process, etc., etc. So this is a, a, a screen of a patient during the initial phase with paralysis with the sitting we propose. So it's like a pressure control ventilation. And this is what happened uh, as soon as you stop paralysis, there is some uh, spontaneous breathing that occur uh, independently of uh, the breath, uh, the mandatory breath uh, set on the ventilator. The aim of our study in the arm of APR, in the APRV arm is to promote a spontaneous uh, activity, uh, ventilation, minute ventilation, representing here around 24 hours, uh, which reach, uh, we would like 50% uh, uh, of total global uh, minute ventilation. We have developed an algorithm in order to, in order to, uh, to deal with different situations, two situations in which the spontaneous breathing activity is too less, uh, uh, below 10%, uh, either because of too much sedation, then you have to reduce sedation, or either because of too much ventilation, then you have to reduce uh, ventilation. Uh, in the opposite, in case of too much spontaneous breathing activity with the risk of high tidal volume, if the sedation is not sufficient, you have to increase sedation. If the mandatory ventilation is not sufficient, we uh, increase mandatory ventilation in order to uh, reduce the respiratory drive. So this is a global concept. Uh, my point for the conclusion is that spontaneous breathing at the early phase of ARDS uh, um, is a very important point, but needs to, to control the, the tidal volume, and I think it's feasible. Uh, the second point is that uh, we have to keep in mind that with at least with conventional mode of ventilation, pressure support, assist control, adding some synchronization um, may lead in, in amplifying the tidal volume with some risk that uh, could be managed, but we have to keep it in mind. And the third point is that uh, promoting spontaneous ventilation um, uh, may lead for measure uh, asynchrony, uh, but uh, I, I think uh, the, this, the challenge for the future is to promote spontaneous breathing without too much asynchrony and while keeping the tidal volume, at least for the, uh, the, the sitting of ILDS. I thank you very much. <laughs>